Praise the Lord. Doesn't that still make cold chills go up your spine to sing about America and how God has given us a country and we have freedom to worship him? Aren't you glad to be an American today? Yeah, praise God. And we especially want to honor all of our servicemen and women who have served so faithfully. Just be seated, everybody. This would be a, a better way to do it. So we always ask them if we, would, if we can have our servicemen and women who have served to please stand at this time all over the building, in the choir, every place. Look around. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God has been so good to us. He has blessed us with a, America is the most wonderful nation in the world. And many are God's blessings that he has poured out upon us. We have a church where we can worship in freedom. We have a God that loves us and keeps us each day. And so we just have so much to be thankful for. We pray that you'll have a wonderful day today of celebration this holiday, Memorial Day. There'll be no service this evening. You can stay with your family and have a good time of fellowship. And um, we, uh, we just are enjoying every day of life. When you run into a tragedy or uh, something you hadn't gone through for a long time, like what we went through with Virgil's sickness, uh, it makes you appreciate every day that you get up. You say, thank you, God, for one more time to go to church. All the blessings that God has given us, we should not take lightly. A wonderful church that loves God and serves God and a wonderful pastor and staff and those that love him and love his work and his blessings on us. A new building coming into being and all the blessings of God. Don't you see the hand of God on our church? Don't you see the blessings of God on your life? Can you just raise your hand one more time and say, Thank you, Lord, for America. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for our church and for your blessings. We thank you for being here today. God bless you. And if you're new and visiting with us, you are welcome to come to our services. And there's a beautiful bulletin that you can receive this morning to take home. And it shares all the services and things that are going on. There's so much going on in this church. You need a bulletin to help you to know what to do because there's so many wonderful plans and ways to have classes and all, so many wonderful experiences that people love here and they share that love. So thank you for being here today if you're new. We just ask all of our visitors to remain seated. And all of you who are members and regular attenders, would you stand all over the building today? And we'll find our visitors seated around, and then you are to turn around and shake hands and greet them and introduce yourself. Get out in the aisle and greet one another and give them a God bless you. Thank you.
Can I tell you, I went to the doctor last week to my cardiologist and he said, oh, I don't want to see you no more. I went to the doctor Tuesday that did my heart ablation. And he said, I'm telling you, this is, this is wonderful. He says, you don't realize how weak and how bad of condition your heart was. He says, but you're back at better than full strength. <laughs> God's my Savior.
the elements of communion in your hand this morning. We've, over the last few minutes, as the choir so beautifully has sung about the blood, our victory. How many of you have victory through the blood of Jesus Christ this morning? The victory that comes through Christ's sacrifice, leaving the throne of God, the palaces of glory, to leave there the, the perfect presence of, of the Lord, to come and make himself lowly and not even have a place, the Bible says, to lay his head, give himself fully and completely to the humanity that he wanted to save, becoming human, in order that you and I could know this morning the joy of our salvation. It's amazing. As we're preparing our hearts for communion this morning, this is a beautiful thing, especially on Memorial Day, that we would recognize the greatest warrior, the greatest champion who ever lived, the one who gave his life, the ultimate soldier who fought the greatest battle, not just for a country, but he fought it for all of humanity. And he won his battle, giving his life to bring redemption to you and I. So Memorial Day, Happy Memorial Day. Yes. As the Bible instructs us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, where Paul was writing about this moment in our church today, communion, when we would remember, he said, as oft as you drink this drink and you eat this bread, do it in remembrance of me. For in so doing, you will show glory and honor to him until he returns, until he comes. How many of you know Jesus is coming soon? Jesus is coming. If you just needed somebody to encourage you and to remind you, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18 says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Maranatha. Jesus is coming soon. So in the meantime, we will remember, just so that we don't get confused. We don't want to get confused in our life and in this living that we're in, the battles that rage, the storms that threaten us, and the attitudes that drive us. We don't want to get off track and start thinking that it's our goodness or it's anything we've done. How many of you know there ain't one of you stands righteous before God in your own righteousness? The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. None of us stand on holy ground if it were not for the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's so remembering this morning up in the upper room when he was with his disciples on the night he was betrayed. He took the cup and he took the bread and he shared with them something that would be instituted. What I love about the Lord's Supper, about communion, is that this is a moment in time when we're not just going through a tradition or a sacrament of the church, but we're literally going back to a moment that Jesus started. Jesus instituted communion. So the elements that you hold in your hand were first originated in his heart and his mind. Isn't that amazing? So we're going, to, we're going to honor him and remember him for what he's done for us today. The elements you hold in your hand, I'll read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And Paul writing said these words. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke break it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. And they ate. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the body that was broken for us. The humanity, the incarnation that you came to become one of us so that you might redeem us. It's not your will that anyone should perish, but that all come to salvation. We thank you for the gift of your body broken for us today. And we do this in memory of that. 
he said, do this in remembrance of me. And then it says, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And they drank. I thank you, Lord, for the blood. I thank you for the sacrifice. I thank you for the remission of my sins through your sacrifice. I thank you this morning that I am redeemed. I have eternal life. I am a son of the living God because of your sacrifice. It's not in my own goodness. It's not in my own worth or value. It's in my submission, my giving of my life to you. And I thank you for this wonderful gift of salvation. And thank you for the cleansing that comes through your blood sacrifice. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And everyone agreed and said amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Why don't we give the Lord praise this morning? I like that. I like what Cameron said at the 8.30 service this morning. He was talking about our prayer for Israel here in the midst of our services every Sunday. The Lord led me about a year and a half ago to begin praying in our services for Israel, to stand with Israel. And so as we pray for the United States of America, at a very pivotal and critical time in our own history, we're also praying for Israel today. The Bible talks about seek, seek the good of Israel, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, to pray over her. And the Bible also talks, and Cameron mentioned in Genesis, where it talks about those who bless Israel will be blessed and those who curse her will be cursed. It's important for us in this moment to pray not only for Israel, but for our country as well. Would you do that with me right now? How many of you would say, Pastor, I have a need in my own family, and I want that included in this prayer? Amen. I want us to pray for Carrie Blake. Carrie was here at the first service. She was, she was here at Sunday school and got news that her father has unexpectedly passed away. Would you help us to pray for Carrie today and her family? They attend our church and would be here, except that they got called out. Also want us to continue to pray for Sheila Sharp. This is Carolyn Perfetti's mom had to call a squad for her this morning and we want to pray for her that God will touch her and strengthen her. Charles Reed had to leave the service this morning before it started not feeling well. Let's let's pray for him. And also, how many have been praying for our little our little guy, Josh Manns, who's been in the heart surgery, open heart surgery up in Columbus. Word is good. Family sent word this morning that he's resting and doing well and they're looking for him to get dismissed. Isn't that great? God has blessed and touched the little guy. Let's continue to pray for him. He is a sharp little guy. Wednesday night, we anointed him, and people were standing all around him, praying over him. And this little guy just kept looking up, his eyes as big as saucers. He didn't know what was going on. But he knew it had something to do with him. And uh, we're so proud of them and praying for their family. I want to pray for um, Ohio Christian Academy this morning, and I'll be receiving an offering for them in just a moment. But I want to pray that God touch them and, and the work that they're doing. And never have we been in a more important time in our church or in the country where it's more important that we have a Christian school. And God gave us a successful first year. Many, some of our students are, are from the local church here. Others are from different places. But we're so appreciative of them. They've had their first graduation, and we're excited for them. I want you to help me pray for Ohio Christian Academy as we move into this next year, uh, year number two. So let's pray for these needs together. Father, as we come to you, we thank you that for you are a keeper. The Lord, you, you keep us, you provide for us, you heal us, you deliver us. Lord, we thank you for your presence. You're there, the present help in the time of our trouble as you were for Carrie this morning. Just pray that you'd be with their family. Touch all of these needs together. Let the presence and the power of God be with each one of them. We pray for Sister Sharp that your hand would rest with her, strengthen her and touch her with a healing touch. Lord, we pray for Brother Reed, who had to leave. We just ask you to touch him, minister strength to him, minister to him by your spirit. We pray for Ohio Christian Academy. Lead the leaders and directors, the students. Bless them as we begin year two. We honor you and thank you for the blessing that they are. And Lord, we pray for the United States of America. We ask you to touch us in this election year, that you'll lead and guide your people. We know that your will will be accomplished. Elections don't cause you to be anxious or nervous. 
Lord, you're sovereign and you're in control. We ask you to lead your people to follow through with the obedience to your will. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, last but certainly not least, we pray over the state of Israel. We ask you to touch her borders, to continue to bless her sons and daughters, mothers and fathers and grandparents, her families and friends. Touch each of your people, Lord. Minister strength to them as through the timeline of prophecy, they, Lord, will be such a major part of the end time. I just pray that you will bless and keep them. We pray for their good. We pray for their peace. We pray, Lord, for your provision over their lives. And we ask it all as we ask for every need to be met, every hand that was uplifted, knowing that you know every detail and circumstance. We ask you to bless and touch your people today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Our ushers are coming to serve you, and as they do, I would remind you that this is the one year, one part of the year where we want to receive an offering for Ohio Christian Academy. If you don't know, last year we started a school from K to 12th grade, and uh, they started out with, I think they had by the end of this year, they had somewhere around 25 students. They're already about 10 strong for next year with 35 students, and so we're thrilled with them, proud of the work that they're doing. Uh, just so many wonderful leaders and, and people a part of that program. I want it to be something I, I informed them. I told them I want us to be able to be a part of blessing the work that they're doing. They would like to provide some scholarships for some kids to come to Ohio Christian Academy that can't afford it. So I want us to do what we can to bless in, in giving today. All the loose offering will go to them. So we thank you for that today. Ask you to Pray for and continue to pray for the church, for the building program. We're looking at an August 1st date of opening the new building. It's coming along beautifully, and uh, more and more of you are looking out the window there and seeing what's happening. We're sneaking some folks over for a little tour whenever we get an opportunity. So if you'd like to do that, just hit up one of the staff members, and they'll walk you over there. If you get hit up with a construction guy saying, where's your hard hat, just say, Jesus. <laughs> We're thrilled with what God is doing. As I announced to you last week, we have a lawyer that is finalizing uh, all the necessary uh, paperwork for the Clayton Street Mission. And the building is finally lien-free and title-free, and it's coming home to us, and so we're thrilled. So not only do we have a brand new ministry center facility out here that's going up that's going to be fantastic to set this church free in ministry. But we also are going back 100 years to our very first roots and the first building that we ever built ever in the 50s. And we get to take ownership of the Clayton Street, old Clayton Street Church of God, which will become the new Clayton Street Mission. So continue to, to pray and to give as we all are in this together. I give, you give, we all give, and God blesses. I started to say something about ice cream right there, but it wasn't going to work. <laughs> Thank you for those who are faithful in paying your tithe this morning. Father, we come to you. So much to be thankful for. We honor you today and we bless your name. I pray that you will touch and continue to bless all of your people. Minister to those who are able to give and God bless those who are not able so that they will have that wonderful opportunity in their lives. I pray for blessings over their jobs. I pray for promotion. I pray for blessing and favor with raises. I just pray that you will bless your people as they are obedient in giving to you. We ask you to bless and touch Ohio Christian Academy as we give today to scholarships and helping them to bring more students into a safe place to grow and to learn. We thank you for all of this as we dedicate every gift to you. In Christ's name, amen. Spirit 
I am holding in my arms an absolute, bona fide, 100% miracle of God. Amen. This little girl came into the world about three months ago. Four months ago, my bad. You look much younger. <laughs> if you know Bethany's story, you know that she came in with a lot of sickness. And I'll never forget the evening when Melissa called me and was letting me know that the doctor was not giving her any hope that they would ever take her home. The reports were negative. It seemed like every time we'd hit one bit of good news, there'd be 10 other things that went wrong. This little girl ended up having open heart surgery. So many things that were wrong with her. What was amazing about the surgery was, and I mean, Steve, you and Melissa, you prayed and the church prayed. This little girl will never know how many prayers have went up for her, but I'll never forget them coming back out to their parents and saying, well, they said it's going to be 10 hours. We'll let you know what's going to happen. You know, it may be longer. They're going to have to do all this extra work, and it's going to take forever. And about an hour and a half, they came back out, and they said, all we know is that everything we got on all her reports, her CAT scans, her MRIs, we went in there. I ain't making this up. They came out and they said, well, we're just, they're sewing her up right now. Because when they got in there, all the stuff that they knew was wrong with her was no longer wrong with her. And all the chambers of her heart were, were running just fine. Now, let me tell you, you don't go in on a two-month-old or three-month-old baby. You don't go in open heart surgery on a three-month-old baby because you think something might be wrong. But they sure found out there wasn't nothing there. And she's had some struggles, and she's come through a whole, whole lot. But here she is at her home church this morning. I want you to welcome Bethany Turner to church this morning. Let's we'll take a photo. Yes, Jesus loves me. you to be seated for a few minutes and then I'm gonna have you stand for the reading of God's Word so don't get too used to it don't prop yourself up with a pillow or anything where are the Barneses Lorraine and Mary and Barnes they're home today you need to help me welcome them. stand up guys we want to see you welcome back home today I love sister Lorraine's remark she said uh, um, she said, I said, Sister Lorraine, Lorraine we're going we're gonna to just tie you all up and keep you here. And she said, that would be good. Do that. <laughs> so we appreciate them. Is Karen here? I think Karen Purdom was with you. Oh, she had a plane. Okay. Well, we understand that. So good to see you back home today. Also, some really dear, close friends to me. These were some of the very best friends in the world that I had when I was at Lee University way back in the day. It was just a couple of years ago. But um, they're here visiting their family, brother and sister Osborne. I want you to welcome Darren and Amy and Hannah and David Osborne. Would you guys stand? I want them to see you. We got memories and we got photo albums just cram packed full. 
of our four years at Lee, and, and I love seeing them. When I see them, I, I go back to being a college student, and it's, it's wonderful to have them here with us today. And uh, I saw her, I spied her across the congregation. I want us to welcome Faye Robertson back into home church today. She has been uh, dealing with a, a sick husband who has went on to be with the Lord. Brother Fred is honored by our congregation, and we loved him, and we know you did. And you sure stuck right by him, and he's cheering you on from right around heaven's balcony right now. But we're so glad to see you back home. You know, a few weeks ago, I had a revival meeting in Baltimore, Maryland, and many of you have known that. And you prayed for me while we were there. And it was a wonderful week. I learned a valuable lesson when you preach five services back to back to back, and you got to pray for 150 people every night. And you, you preach for a couple hours, and they just preach you happy. And then you've got this one lady there that just loves you to death, and she just keeps saying, preach it, baby, preach it, baby. And, you know, you start saying, preach it, baby, and I'll preach till 2 o'clock, you know. But it was wonderful the way the Spirit moved. People were healed. A, a family, I, I got a testimony that a family was put back together in that revival that were headed towards divorce. And so God really did a wonderful thing. Several people saved, many filled with the Holy Spirit. It was a wonderful week, but I learned something real valuable about that experience. I learned that I am not called to be an evangelist. I cannot see myself doing that 365 days out of the year. And that once is good enough, I'm ready to come back home and, uh, and preach to you. But uh, I had a wonderful afternoon there one day. They took me to Fort McHenry on Chesapeake Bay. And I was able to visit with, there in a, a museum. Uh, I didn't know this, and we sang this at the opening. Star Spangled Banner was written by Francis Scott Key right there in that little bay. And uh, I didn't know the story, but I went to the museum. And, and as I did, I am, now if you don't know me well enough to know this, I am a history freak. I mean, I love anything that has to do with history. And... Uh, I remember going into the Independence Hall in Philadelphia, and I'm staring at the chair, and the, 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 one of the tour guides says, yes, this is the chair that George Washington sat in. And I'm like, are you kidding me? George Washington right there? That's awesome. And I'm just staring at it, you know. And they're like, sir, it's time to move on. I'm like, but George sat right there. I'm wanting to touch it, you know me. I'm like, I wanted to touch it, but I couldn't. They kept it hidden from me, so I couldn't do that. But uh, I love history. And here we are at this Fort McHenry, and we're walking around, we're looking, and, and I start understanding the story. And I look in the center of the fort. At the highest point is this huge flagpole, and at the top of the flagpole is an American flag. It's 42 feet by 30 feet. It's massive. It's huge. And I thought, wow, how beautiful is that? I took a lot of photos of it. But then I went around and I started learning. I read every plaque. I stopped at every little thing and we read and, and learned. And I went into the museum. And as I was watching, there was a big film there. And it was telling about the Battle of Baltimore. And if you don't know about the Battle of Baltimore, I'm not going to go into a major lesson here because I've got to preach. But I am going to make it shorter by telling you that what ended up happening was Francis Scott Key was an American lawyer who was taken out to do some negotiations with the British Army who was kind of attacking and trying to take control of the colonies, right? You know, Revolutionary War, you remember all that. Well, he's out there negotiating, but in the process of negotiating, he gets the prisoners released and they start to head back, but then everything stops because word had come to the British Army that they were now to invade and attack Baltimore. They had already taken siege over in Washington, and you know the War of 1812, this is the same time, and they are literally going to town trying to take the colony back. And well, one of their last efforts to get complete control was to take Baltimore. So they fought all night long. Bombs bursting in air, rockets, red glare, they were everywhere. All kinds of attack. They come up through the side, and they're trying to go come around the back and attack the fort and, and they failed and they had to go back and the ships decided to hit in the middle of the harbor and try to just bombard them and they were outnumbered the Americans were outnumbered we were, had, didn't have enough ammunition they actually closed off one of the arsenal uh, camps where there was, they couldn't even get to the arsenal of, of ammunition and so here they are they're outnumbered, they're outgunned everything is pointing to the fact that the enemy is going to win as a matter of fact, they didn't even put much thought into Baltimore. They thought, this will be an easy overnight war and we'll be done. They weren't expecting that the Americans knew what had happened in D.C. They knew what was going on, and, and they were determined to hold the ground. 
They were not going to let anything detour them or keep them. They were not going to let anybody take away their land. So these gentlemen had something the British Army didn't have. They had resolve. They had a determination that they were not going to lose. Ooh, if we could just get that in the church today. Man, if we could just get that in the church today. Long story short, they fought all night long. Now, Francis Scott Key has been held on the British ship. They won't let him go because of the, the attack that's going on. So he's watching, and he's praying, and he's looking. He's looking into the harbor, and all he can see is that it's through the rockets and the blastings and the bombs. He keeps seeing the flag flying. And he keeps pointing. The flag is still flying. And then it got dark. No more bombs. Didn't know what was happening. As the night carried on and the morning came, the ship was set free to go back into the harbor. And as he went back into the harbor and as the fog began to dissipate, he said he looked up through the fog, the morning light, dawn's early light. He looked up and he said, gentlemen, the flag is still flying. The British had lost. The British had lost, and the Americans had kept their ground. And all they had was that resolve, that determination to withstand them. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose bright, broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Amen. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Isn't that amazing? When we sang that this morning, I sang it like I'd never sung it before. I saw the rockets and the, the black. I used to think the rockets' red glare and the bombs bursting in air was fireworks. <laughs> Just fireworks. No, it was a fight. It was a battle. A battle that kind of reminds me, and, and it, it parallels today with Memorial Day, where we celebrate those in the military who have given their lives for our freedom. We're able to stand and sit in this service this morning, this sanctuary, free to go to church, free to worship our Lord, still. Can I say it? Still, we're free. America still is blessed. Can I get an amen? Amen. We honor those who have fallen. And we talked about the greatest warrior, the greatest soldier on, on earth and in heaven was Jesus Christ who gave his life for all of humanity. And for those, perhaps relatives of yours, we've had relatives in our church that have lost sons and daughters in, in wartime. We understand the value of today and it, it's actually grown to where we, we look to all of our lost loved ones and a lot of graveyards are, are decorated today and it's important that we remember those who once lived and fought and and worked and provided for families and gave you life, gave me life. But it's important that we understand the resolve and the fight that goes with living a life successfully. Living a life successfully. I want you to stand with me for the reading of God's word this morning and I'm gonna get right into the message. Ephesians chapter six and verse 10. It's known in my opinion as the fighter's verse. It's the fighter's verse. It's a scripture we need to learn and know well. We need to memorize. Listen to what it says. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, have you heard that so much throughout your life that you really did not hear what I just said? Paul said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power 
of his might. How many of you know we're not powerful and strong in our own might? We're powerful and we're strong, Mike, in God's power, in God's might. We win in God's strength. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the devices, the lies, the deceptions, the plaque, the plans, the, the, the horrible tricks of the devil. Listen, very key scripture right here. Need to learn this because we don't get it. We just don't get it. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Your neighbor's not your enemy. Not really. But we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, to still keep flying, to stand, to stand. When you've done all, to keep standing. Father, add your blessings to the word of God this morning and challenge our hearts and speak to us by your spirit. In Christ's name, amen. amen. You can be seated. Amen. This is, as I mentioned, a fighter's verse. It's about a warrior and a soldier and I hate to tell you this, if you don't know this, if you just thought, you know, you got saved praying a little prayer and you just thought that was going to be it and everything was going to be a rosy little garden and you were just going to go to heaven on an escalator and everything was going to work out P.T. King. You signed up to be in the army when you sign up with Jesus. You sign up for the front line of battle. When I read these scriptures here, Ephesians chapter 6, and, and I'm hearing about put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the attack of the devil. For we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual wickedness in high places. I almost hear the sounds of rockets, red glare, and bombs bursting in air. I hear the sound of combat. You can sense the smoke. You can see the fog, the gunfire, the soldiers rushing on the front line. But you can also hear in here in verse 13, take up therefore the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. That gives me that sound of victory. I read those scriptures and I told and it comes resounding through verse 13 that we are victorious in the end. How many of you know you always will win with Christ? You always will win. If you don't win, you're the first one to, to find that God has failed. If you're the first one who falls flat on your face, then you are the very first person in all of history that God has lied to. He's not a liar. God is strong and mighty. How many of you know greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world? There is power in Christ. There's power in God. God will not fail. He cannot fail. Where we fail is we fail in obedience to trust. We fail to endure to the end. He told us over and over again, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. We got to endure. We got we to just stay the course. We can't give up and quit and fight and, and then just lay down. We can't throw in the towel. How many of you know it's about endurance on your part? That's it. That's it. And when we understand that, then we can really, really, really read this Ephesians chapter 6 in a way that perhaps... We've never read it before. It's a fighter's verse. It's a victor's verse. It's my verse, man. I hold on to that. There are times in my life when this verse right here, no matter what I'm going through, I can walk out of a hospital. I can walk out of a jail, a prison. You know, not, you know I've been to visit folks and hear their stories and be there. I've not yet been there, but I, I've been there. And I've seen the stories and the horror that goes behind that. And I, I have felt the horrors of, of death that I've walked out of the cemeteries for my own family and for yours. We've been there. We've seen the hard times. We've seen the rough knocks. We know what it is to be in what the Bible's calling here the evil day. How many of you know we're in an evil day? 
This is the evil day. The evil day is upon us in 2016. But thank God we don't fight on our own. We don't have to fight in our own power. We can fight in a victorious, victorious power of God that is there to give us strength when we need it, provision when we need it, food when we need it. He will take care of his people. I say we carpe diem. Seize the day. Seize the day. You know, I love that. I got a shirt at home. I like to wear it on days when I'm just feeling like a fight. Carpe diem. I've walked in the office and looked at some of the ladies, and I've said, carpe diem. They're like, oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm sure they send word right away. It's going to be one of those days. Pastor's carpe diem. And I don't see Janelle. She ran off of me. God's not left us to fight on our own. We are continually being stalked by the devil. Understand me. I'm not trying to disillusion us this morning with some pie in the sky. There are troubles, trials, there are attacks, there's persecutions. But when we're persecuted, we're not knocked out. When we get down, we're not put down forever. We get right back up. We, every time we're hit, we get right back up. We ought to be like them old bouncy balls. You know, when, when we hit the ground, we jump right back up. And the power of the Lord is there to strengthen us and to give us victory and to give us that wisdom that we need to move forward and to be victorious. I always want to get to verse 13, able to stand. I want to keep flying. Every time I'm at the end of my, my rope, I see that old flag at Fort McHenry. See, I, I was sitting in that little museum, and I was watching the film, and I'm all entrenched in this. I'm watching everything. And then all of a sudden, as I'm sitting there, and they're talking about Francis Scott Key gets a pen, and in the morning light, he starts writing down these words, Oh, say, can you see? And he's writing it all down. The flag was still there. I'm looking, and the flag is there in the video. And then all of a sudden, the screen raises up. And if you've ever been there before, you can't even hardly believe it. There in front of you is the actual flag on that hill waving in the wind. And I'm sitting there, and in my old sappy self, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I mean, they practically had to wheel me out of there. I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. Are you kidding me? Who designed this? They ought to get an Academy Award or something, whatever you give people. It was beautiful when you think about that. And, you, and I see that now. I see it in my own life. I'm like, Lord, through the bombs that are bursting, through the trials and the troubles that have come my way, I am a child of God. I don't belong to this world. I belong to another world. I'm a citizen of heaven. And so I know that though the battle may rage and it may be bad on my left and on my right, I am victorious through Christ. And the flag over me, the banner over me, is still flying high. Hallelujah. Amen. That makes me, I want to do one of them old Pentecostal shouts. You know, boy, when people get, woo, I'm ready. I'll dance all across the stage. The power of the Lord in us. Power over, you know, the Bible tells us, he warned us in 2 Timothy. He said, perilous times will come. We know that. Don't sit back and wonder, why am I going through this? Where is God? God must not be there. Really? Read the Bible. Read the Bible. The power of God is present. He's real. He doesn't fall. He doesn't fail. He doesn't raise up a bunch of mediocre, average knuckleheads, man. He raises up mighty warriors and champions. Let the power of God transform and change you into the gladiator that you're supposed to be. If I'm called to give my life, so be it. If I'm called to walk in suffering and sacrifice, so be it. If I will live my life to understand that at the end, I will stand amongst those who will cast my crowns at the feet of Jesus Christ, crying out, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive honor and glory and power and riches and wisdom. Power of God. That power at work in me. Oh, get out of the mullet grubs. Get out of the whining and the complaining, man. This is Memorial Day. 
It's a day to remember sacrifices have been made so you can stand here today. You're not hiding out in some cave somewhere. You're not waiting for the ball to drop. You're not waiting for all the world to crumble around you. You have been set free. He has risen. The tomb is empty. And Christ has come out a victor. Victor. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ooh, I'm ready to build this building. I'm ready to go out there. I'm ready to walk that building out right now, claiming it's free in Jesus' name. Four million dollars going to drop out of the sky and pay for it. And so we're just going to be busy and doing all the work of God we can do. You see, the enemy wants to put up a big fog screen. See that, that all the bombs and the, the rockets and all that stuff was keeping us so that Francis Scott he couldn't see into the bay. He couldn't tell in the nighttime. He couldn't tell in the darkness around him. He couldn't see who won. Who wins? And then all of a sudden, the light began to shine. Can you imagine? I saw pictures of what that flag would look like in their animation. And it looked torn and beaten. It looked like it had been through the war. It was covered with soot and, and there it was. But it was still waving, tattered and torn. It was still flying high over Fort McHenry. And let me tell you something. The devil may, have you, may think he has your number. He may think he's got you out. He may think he has hit you for the last time and you're going down. He may have hit you so hard that it hurts and you're crying and you're in pain. And maybe there is suffering in your life. But listen to me, child of God. If you belong to the Lord, you are still going to be standing at that last day. And God is going to get the victory for you. And your tragedy is going to turn into a testimony. I'm telling you, God's got you. He's not going to let you go. He's going to be there for you. That's our God. That's who we're serving. That's why I give him my all. That's why I want him to have all my attention. I want him to have all my time because I know that at the end, when it's all said and done, I'm going to be standing in the ring where the victors are and I'm going to receive the prize. The prize. The prize of Christ Jesus looking at me and saying, well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Ray, you were faithful. You were faithful through it all. Man, don't be one of those people standing at the last that's got to repent and cry and hope you can get. Man, God, just forgive me real quick, Lord. Oh, my goodness, I want to make sure I'm standing there. I don't want to be one of those people. And when God does bring victory into your life, don't be one of those people that your first prayer has got to be a long prayer of repentance because you didn't believe him the whole time he gave you promise after promise after promise. Don't be that person. Be somebody who trusts him in the midst of it. Be somebody that in the middle of the night, you just keep looking for your flag. Keep looking for your flag to be flying high. Keep looking for the victory that comes from God. I'm telling you what, I'm telling you, we have every reason in the world to realize and know we are going to win the game. We're going to win. There is no loser in God's team. There is no loser. The enemy wants you to think. He puts that big old smoke screen up. He puts all that dark. He wants you to think, oh, there's no hope. Where's God? I'm telling you, don't lose heart. Don't lose faith. Don't give up. I'm telling you, it's worth it if you'll hang on. Don't let this world become valuable and so important. Don't let it take your priority. Don't let it be the most important thing going. Don't let that kind of foolishness happen to you. You keep your eyes on the prize of Christ Jesus. Yes, live this life. Live to the best of your ability. God's not called you to fail. He's called you to succeed. Do the best you can. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto me. In. But keep your eyes on the prize, but live a life abundant. And do that to the best of your ability, knowing that when you get through this one, there is a victory that comes. Suddenly, old concrete will turn into gold, and you and I will be walking down streets that God has made for us as a reward. Y'all believe that? Say amen. amen. Are you with me? Are you with me? I feel like I'm a coach right now. Brian, you ought to be up here with me, and we'll just go at it feel like I'm talking to the team tonight. Man, the devil's going to hit you. He's going to knock you sideways. He's going to numb your brain. He's going to do everything he can to make you just lose it and end up being ignorant. Don't let that happen to you. 
Stand firm in the faith of God. Stand firm against the wiles of the devil. Don't let his tricks and his deceivery, don't let his stuff wear you down to where you can't see straight anymore. Realize and know it may be dark and there may be bombs bursting and it may be that you can't see what's ahead, but know God is going to get you through it. The enemy knows, you see. He knows, and there's a reason why he's so active right now. Did you know that? Cheers, everybody. There's a reason why he's so active right now. And I'm going to tell you something. It's not going to, it's not going to feel good. Oh, can you take it? I had to take it. I had to write it down first. The reason the enemy is so active in the world today is because Christians have neglected spiritual warfare. I know what happened. I, I know a lot of folks went all extreme and fanatic and, and a lot of TV preachers went off in, into spiritual warfare and made a lot of whole money on it and got a lot of video series. And, and I know a lot of stuff happened and made a lot of people sick. And, and, and I realized that. And, you know, they started naming and claiming everything under the sun. You know, everybody's got to have this and have that. And, and they got all off balance with a lot of stuff. But because of that, a lot of preachers, a lot of pastors have shied away from all that. And we've kind of moved back into, well, now let's just calm down, okay? How do you calm down when the enemy is beating up and killing and destroying your family? When young people are dying left and right and heroin is taking over Middletown? How do you do that? How do you stay calm, sir? How do you just be quiet, sir? How do I, how do I make a cute little service for you that just sounds like, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. That's good for kids, but how many of you know it's time to grow up? It's time for us to grow up. It's time for us to start facing the enemy head on in the front line of battle and do some damage to the kingdom of darkness because the flag is still flying for the child of God. Hallelujah. Woo I feel the Lord this morning. I feel God in this place. He wants you to be victorious. He wants you to get out of the stupor and out of the, the numbness you're in, out of the lackadaisical living, the, the, the complacency of your life. He wants you to shake yourself. If not, he'll send something. He loves you enough. He'll send something to shake you up. God will send something to shake you up. If he's got to do that, he will. And I thank God there have been many times in my life. It's good to see Brother Fletcher here. Wonderful man of God, preacher of the gospel. I'm telling you, there have been times in my own life as a minister when I had been walking my way, thought I was doing pretty well. And then I run into a big old trial. And the Lord has to show me once again, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. I'll never be a champion and a victor in my own strength. I'll have the favor of God on me, and I'll do things that you can't even imagine. Mighty things, but I'll only do it as I keep remembering that the power is of God and not of men, not of me. I ain't responsible for my success. I'm not responsible for my life. I'm not responsible for any good thing that happens to me. It is the favor and the power of God at work in my life. And when you understand that, the enemy cannot get an advantage over you. He cannot win. He cannot tear your family down. He cannot fight you left and right. He cannot destroy the faith you've poured into your babies and your children. Not when you start living out this spiritual warfare. It's time for us to absolutely get on the front line and start fighting for our families, for our church, for our community, for, those, for the people walking the streets. I'm telling you, it amazes me when I talk to the law enforcement agents that I know from our church and the community, when they begin to share with me and talk about it. One of them looked at me and said, Pastor, you have no idea. And they said, I'm glad you don't know, but you ought to know that there is another whole world going on all around you right here in Middletown that you don't even know about. There's prostitution and drug abuse and all kinds of stuff going on that you don't even know about. He said, you'll be walking in, in a store and you won't even know what's happening right there in front of you. And I said, Lord, have mercy. Protect me, Jesus. We don't know. But what we do know is how to fight it. We do know how to fight it. You see, the enemy knows his time is short. And the Bible tells us that, Revelation chapter 12, that's another reason why he's so active. Not only have Christians let down the fight, and they're no longer, they, they, so many folks are all steeped up in, let's just have a club. Let's just have an, a, a fun time. Let, let's just have a country club. I want to go to a country club kind of church where we just, you know, we're all 
cute and inspired, and, and we all just feel good about ourselves. That, that's the kind of church I'm looking for, Pastor. Well, I like that too, and I, we're going to have a little cafe out here with some coffee for you. I'll make you feel real good. <laughs> Throw in a croissant for free. <laughs> and that's all right, and that's good, and I like that. I, I love that stuff. We're trying to be updated and move into a 21st century and trying to, you know, win folks that got Disney and everybody else fighting for their time. I understand. It's big time out there, so you've got to work on things like that. But at the end of the day, when we come in here, I want to keep it so that the presence of God still fills the sanctuary, still fills the house of the Lord so that we know the power of God, the power of God. I want our young people, they're going to Alaska on this mission trip in a few couple of weeks. I want them to know the power of God is what they depend on when they get on that plane and fly over there. When they're ministering to those kids in Alaska, I want them to know it's the power of God they need. I want them to search out. They're ready. They've prepared and practiced and got ready. But I want them to be prepared on the inside for the battle that will be waiting. Because you see, the enemy don't take a vacation. He don't even do little slight little mission trips. The enemy is always fighting 24 hours a day, seven days a week, doing everything he can to try to tear down the ministry. And there are young people that are coming to youth camp in Alaska. There are young people that this is going to be their one shot for the year. It's the one chance where they're going to get away from all the troubles and all the trials that they're living in. And they're going to go to camp. And there they are, you, the warriors, the gladiators, there to fight and minister for them. I'm praying you're ready. I'm praying you are so ready on the inside that you've been empowered by God to be ready for the work. I want our young people to know the power. I want us as a church to always appreciate and not take for granted the presence of the Lord that was here this morning. I want the presence and power of God to lead us continually. Satan knows his time is short. Revelation 12 and 12, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. Short. Time is short. You see, all of the, the spiritual world, they know what's going on. Angels of God, they know what's going on. The enemy knows what's going on. The only people that half the time don't know what's going on is all these Christians. But well, what's going on? Is the Lord coming back? Somebody said to me the other day, they said, every time you act like, you, like, like you're a little you know, dumb, I said, why do you always put a southern accent in there? I said, I don't do that on purpose. It's because my grandma's from Tennessee, and my, all my, my dad's from Tennessee. And so I, I, all, my, all my kinfolk, whenever they talking about chewing backer and stuff like that, you know, I just get in that, that dialect. I don't know why. I don't know where that came from. That's for you, Amy and Darren. <laughs> They're from the south. Satan knows his time is short. And another reason that Satan is so active today is because society has rejected God and embraced evil in pretty radical ways. Look at how pornography, open Satan worship, drug and alcohol abuse, sexual immorality, killing of unborn babies, and the redefinition of marriage, which is totally blowing my mind. And now you don't, the kids don't even know what bathroom to go to. You know, you and I can fight it out all day long, but that is a result of immorality and sin. That's sin. And say, sin, sin has always been with us, but what I'm telling you, the enemy is so active right now because it just seems like in radical ways we have just unleashed and opened up the door to anything. Anything and everything goes. And there is no shame, no more. There is no more. You, you got room for conviction. And let me make it very clear how I feel. We ought to do everything in our power to love the sinner. The sinner is going to do exactly that. They're going to act like they're lost. You know, a lot of times I can't believe how Christians sometimes will, will actually have a problem because they can't believe that sinners act lost. I'm like, yeah. Don't be surprised when they act lost in this, in this society, but love them anyway. Love them with the love of God. Turn, turn down your turned up nose and start putting your arm around them and serve them and love them and be there for them and show them the light and the love of Christ. 
They're crying out. They're searching for answers. They don't know what to do. They have found themselves all tangled up in all kinds of mess. And they're looking for somebody who has an answer. But most of the time, the church is sitting back going, hmm. Smack, smack. Time for us to get a loving heart that reaches into the lost and hurting souls and, and, and helps them. They need an answer. And how many of you know Jesus is still the answer for the world? He's the same answer it's always been. We're not living in a day. We're not living in a day like we used to. It's not like it was back in the days of Little House on the Prairie. It's not like that anymore. Nowadays, it's, it's trouble and trial. And it's a troubled world on every corner. Satan doesn't fight fair. Satan don't fight fair. Perhaps you've had a good week, a good month. Maybe this year has been real good. Enjoy every blessing you got and don't take it for granted because I'm telling you, there's a battle that's going on and Satan don't take a vacation. But you and I have got to understand the power of God. He said the evil day will come. We know that we're in the evil day. But he didn't say that without giving us something I'm going to close with. It's a command. He said, put on the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God. We got to recognize who our enemies are. Put on the armor that will fight the enemy and bring victory. You see, you and I spend so much time in the church, more, more particularly, pointing at people. There's my enemy. There's my enemy. My boss is my enemy. Or oh, that, 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 my boss is possessed. He's the devil incarnate. He's the devil. Hope the office don't say that. <laughs> And it was Paul, Paul who understood this when he was writing these words, for we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. If you will recognize your enemy is not another human being standing in front of you, oh, they may be bad. They may be turned over. They may be rotten to the core, and they may be used like a tool in the devil's hand. But understand, they're not your enemy. They're just locked up in deception just like you are. That's why it's easier to love those who hate us because we recognize they're not the real enemy. You see, the enemy hides behind all that fog. He hides all behind all that. He loves to hide. He'll point, the he'll point fingers at the church. He'll point fingers at God. He loves to blame God. Where was God? Where is God? We walk around sometimes. I hear Christians been in the faith forever. Well, I just don't know where God is. He's in the same place he's always been. He's God at the back door. He's God on the platforms. God in the pew. He's God, God forevermore. That's R.W. Shambach sings it. He's God, and he's always on the throne. Where's God? I really don't know, Pastor, where God is. Well, I haven't seen George Washington walking around neither. I saw his chair. But I haven't seen him. I haven't met him. I don't know him personally. I never had a conversation with him. I've never known of him. I just know about him. I don't ever walk around go, oh, I'm having such a bad day today. Why, Ray? What's going on? Well, I just don't know that I believe in George Washington. <laughs> I'm having a hard day. You know, I, was George real? Is he really? Was he there? I mean, he's on that, that dollar bill. There's paintings of him, but... They got paintings of Jesus too. I, I just don't know. I'm having a hard day today. I, I think I'm a, I think I'm a, a washethist, which is like an atheist. Wow, I need to end really quickly. <laughs> I'm an atheist. I don't believe in George Washington. I just, I'm having pray for me, Jeff. I just don't know that I believe in old George. Did he really cut down that? Was that the cherry tree? Yeah. It sounds silly, don't it? It sounds silly. But yeah, we get up in the morning sometimes, and we're like, God, where are you? And we look at one another, where's God? Where's God? Let me tell you something. He is high and mighty and sitting on his throne. He is powerful. 
He is awesome. His might knows no weakness. His strong arm, his hand is not shortened that it cannot save. He is a mighty God, powerful God, victorious God. And we are more than conquerors through him. We are victorious through the blood covering of Christ Jesus in our lives. He is at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I. And we are as good as walking heaven's streets right now. Because we are children of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who are you, Jesus? Who are you, Jesus? He looked at his disciples. He said, who do you say that I am? And Peter jumped up and said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. He's alive this morning and well, and he's in control. He's sovereign, and he's on his throne. Stand with me all over the congregation. Hallelujah. So put on the belt of truth. Quit listening to the lies of the enemy. Quit listening to deception. And quit letting the world dictate to you your faith in God. Put on the belt of truth. Look back to truth. Live in truth. Understand the breastplate of righteousness. You can't live it. You can't do it. You'll never be successful. You will never live a godly, holy life. Forget it. Stop trying. Do a whole lot about surrendering. It's in surrendering to God. Give God all that you are. Paul said it best. He said, for I am crucified with Christ. It's not I that lives, but Christ who lives in me. That's my victory. Victory. That's where my strength lies. Set somebody free not too long ago in a counseling session. He was just like, man, I just can't cut it. I can't live it. I can't do this. I keep trying. I keep trying. I keep trying to live right. I can't do it. I said, guess what? Stop trying. And he was like, pastor, what? I said, you can't do it, man. What are you, what are you doing? You, you can't fight this. You can't do this. It's not your power. It's not your strength. It's not in your ability. You can't save yourself. You can't fix yourself. You can't make yourself better. You can't be holy. It's impossible. Work hard and you're wasting your time. But if you on bended knee will give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, the power of Christ comes and fills up your soul and heart. He begins to empower you. It's the scripture says, I can do all things through Christ. Say it, through Christ. And the power is in Christ, not in you. It's in Jesus. He gives you strength. And when he gives you strength, you can run through a troop and leap over a wall. You can speak to any enemy and you can drink any deadly thing and it will not hurt you. I'm telling you, you live in the power of God and you're living supernatural. You need to walk across the water, you'll walk across the water. You need to live in victory and you need to get healing, you'll have healing. But it's not in you, not in a preacher, not in the church of God. It is in Christ Jesus, the Lord, the Savior of us all. That's where our strength lies. Shoes of the gospel of peace. The shield of faith. I'm trying to close it. The helmet of salvation protects our mind from all the enemy's lies and all the stuff coming at you. The assurance that he loves you and he gave his life for you. It's his will that none perish, but all, all come to repentance. And the precious sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, he said, I have given you these things to be more than victorious. You have victory this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here this morning, I want to make an invitation to you. All, all of us are going to pray in just a moment. But I, if you're here today and you need Christ in your life, you need to accept Christ in your life, to fight your battles for you, to be Lord over your life. If you need salvation, you've not yet accepted Christ. Are you here this morning and you need to pray a prayer? Prayer in itself won't save you, but this prayer from your heart, this prayer from your heart saying, I believe in you, Christ. I believe in you as the Son of God, and I will confess you before this house this morning. I will accept Christ into my life to be the Lord of my life. If you're here and that's your desire and that's your heart, then I want your hand to fly up real, real quick and right back down. Are you here? Who wants to be saved this morning? God bless you, sir. Anyone else? God bless you, sir. Anyone else? I want to pray that prayer, Pastor. I want to pray this morning. God. Anyone else? A few moments, a few seconds. I'm going to wait. Anyone else? 
Christians are praying in the house. Man, praying right now. The enemy is doing that thing where he wants to keep you from it. Is there anyone else? Lord, Pastor, I want to be saved this morning. I want to pray that prayer to be right with God. Thank you for these that have lifted your hands. Perhaps you didn't lift your hand. If you didn't, that's, that's between you and the Lord. But I want you to pray this prayer with us if you have that heart. If you have desire in your heart, I want you to pray. But this prayer, like I said, it's just a prayer if it's not from your heart and life. And a prayer in and of itself can't do a miracle, but the miracle is in the heart. We're helping you. We're just taking you to the throne this morning. A prayer that would help you to understand what you're supposed to do in giving and surrendering your life to Jesus. I can't save you. Church can't save you. Christ saves you. So I want all of us to walk our brothers and sisters up to the throne. For these that wants to pray this this morning, would you help us? Let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I accept you as my Savior. I declare you're Lord. Be the Lord of my life. You're the Son of God. I believe it in my heart. I know that you died for me. That you rose from the dead. You purchased my salvation. According to your word, if I believe this and I confess this, I'm saved. So this morning, receive me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Now listen. One more prayer. I want to pray for us. I want us to, to understand the battle that's raging right in front of you, whether you're in it or not, whether you're fighting or not fighting. That's, that doesn't, mean, doesn't matter. The battle is raging in front of you. Your family, your son, your daughters, they're fighting. They're in a battle. They're getting beat up left and right. Are you in the front line of battle? Are you fighting for them? Are you fighting for your family, for your husband, for your wife? Are you fighting for them? Because the battle's going on whether you're in or out. You may say, oh, I don't believe in all that. That's fine. Sit there like a lump on a log and let them just die in the midst of battle. Because they're in a battle irregardless. We're all in the battle. So the, the question is, will you fight? Will you not neglect spiritual warfare? And will you take on intercession for your family? For your friends, for your church, for your pastor, please. How many of you know this? I'm going to close with this, but how many of you know there are seducing spirits trying to destroy this church constantly? There are, there are spirits trying its best to destroy this church. How many of you know that? You, you know that. They're working hard to do everything. They want to tear Cameron down and Richard and, and, and all the other pastors. They, they want to rip them to shreds. They want to tear me down. They want to rip Gary right out of they're, they're always working. They, they're up all night long, never sleep always fighting we need somebody on the front line for their church I heard three amens we need somebody on the front line for their church we got to do battle Ephesians chapter 6 finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and the power of his might put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the enemy the wiles of the devil and when you do, victory is coming to your house. Victory is coming to your church. Victory is coming to your life. Amen? Let's pray right now. Father, we come to you. Lord, we, we bring our hearts, our minds, our determination. We're going to fight for our family. We're going to fight for our, our children. We're going to fight for our marriages. We're going to fight, Lord, for our friends. We're going to fight for our church. We're going to fight for our pastors. We're going to fight, Lord, for our country. We're going to fight. God and we're going to stand and we're not going to be dismayed. Lord, our flag is still flying and we are not going to give in. The enemy will not get an advantage over us because we are more than conquerors through you. So lead us in this fight. Lead us into the armor of God so that we'll be able to stand when it's all said and done. Giving you glory and honor and praise for all that is done. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray and we thank you Father and everyone said amen. Now listen. There are tons of graduation parties. There are tons of family reunions. Folks are in, and, and we got so many folks even visiting this morning from out of town. We understand that. That's why we want you to go be with your family tonight. 
I'm going to go be with my daddy. I'm going to go to his house. I'm going to put the grill on, and we're going to spend time together. I want you to do the same thing. I want you to pray with your family. I want you to talk about the Lord. Talk about the service. Talk about things. Pray with your family and be with them. Spend quality time with them. And let God bless your family time. How many of you know family is extremely important? Say amen. amen. Family is important. We want you to be able to do that. But to all of you graduates, there are parties everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, they're from one end of town to the other. God bless y'all. We love you, and we are so proud of you. But go enjoy yourself and don't feel guilty. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. My high tower.